All right, welcome to the part of the multimeter that relates to the measurement of current. We did voltage, we did resistance. Both were set on our lead setting to right here and here, which is the volt ohm versus the common. Now it's time for us to measure current. Voltage and resistance are always measured across the item in question. Now, the measurement of current is always through the device. We need to feel how much current, the flow that's going through that device. Now, we are really getting ourselves into a bit of a jam. Here's what happens. This will get me in a little bit of trouble, but I think it will illustrate exactly what we've got going on. The measurement of voltage is sort of like going to a store and looking at the produce. You can look at it, and you won't get in a whole lot of trouble. The measurement of current is sort of like unprotected sex. You're going to get in a whole lot of trouble if you're not careful with what you're doing. And you may laugh and choke at that, but this is in the same situation. We are going to put our lives and our multimeter in direct line with the flow of current. With most applications, that's not a big deal because we're going to deal with very low amounts of current, and that's not going to harm us. However, if we're dealing with large 5 amp, 10 amp services, now all of a sudden we are coming in direct contact with a high current item that could kill us. That is very very real and a concern. So here's what we do when we want to measure something. Let's do a very small circuit first. What we're going to do is we have to set our meter up to read current. So we'll turn our meter on. We will have to adjust our leads because now we're going to measure current. Our current setting is going to require us to pull off the lead. So we're no longer to meet voltage or resistance, we're going to read current. We have to physically move that meter and now either go to the milliamp setting or the 20 amp setting. This does state that we could read 20 amps. However, I can only read it for a maximum of 30 seconds. I do not want to know much more than that. What we use the multimeter for to read current is to read a very quick short burst. Okay, I've got a current present. If I need a more succinct and robust amount of time for current measurements, we're going to use a lot of different tools, some clamp-on amp probes, some indirect methods that don't require us to get ourselves into a predicament. So what we have here is multimeter. We're going to move to the milliamp setting. One thing that will happen is when you set that to milliamps, our probes are still going to be the red and the black. We now need to move our multimeter's dial to read the current. There's two settings. There could be more on your multimeter, but you're going to want to set it to the milliamp setting. Then we're going to want to know, are we going to do DC or AC? So in the video frame you see, we've got a battery set up, and that's what we've got going on there. So we're going to set it to DC. You cannot, and this is absolutely positively cannot be done. If I were to do this and touch these two leads right now, I would blow the fuse that's in the back end of this multimeter just like that. And there would be magic smoke that's let out so that we cannot do that. What we need to do is have a load. We need a path load source in order to measure current. Current is going to be a path load source. So we're still going to use the 22K ohm resistor that we had from the previous video. And now we're going to have a complete path load source. And I'm going to connect my circuit just like this. Now, the funny thing about it is, here's my path load source. We don't see anything happening. I could probably quickly touch that. It doesn't feel too hot, but I don't know what's going on. What I've seen people do is they will set their meter up correctly. They'll set their dial up correctly, and then they're going to measure across the load. Now, that is the path of least resistance. The load current is going to leave the battery, come through to here, come through this meter lead, into here, out the black, through here and back to the battery and poof, I've just blown my fuse. I cannot measure across. I have to measure through, always through. Well, I have to physically break the circuit. I'm going to break the circuit. I'm going to leave that there. And then I am going to touch where I broke that circuit at. And in this case, you can see that I'm reading 0.55 of a milliamp. Not 55 milliamps, but 0.55. And if I were to take 12 volts and divide it by 22,000, I would have 0.55 of a milliamp. Ranges are very critical when we know it, but our point being in this lesson is to see the setup of our multimeter. We want to set it to the correct lead setting, the correct dial setting, AC and DC. Then we want to measure across for voltage, through for current. Always measure through. You always have to break the circuit. One thing that I will require as I teach at a college, and if somebody blows a fuse on their multimeter, they got to fix it. So you always measure through, and you have to have your dial set like this. 
Now let's just take a look at 0.55 of a milliamp. What if we had set our dial to the 20 amp range? Will it still read? Well, it could, but you can see that this needle is not moving because the range is set so high. What this could do for me is just tell me if I had a little more current, whether I had a system present or not, whether I had flow of current. It's not in our best interest to always leave it set at 20 amps and then try to measure these lower values. That's not really what we want.